Throughout the history of cycling, only three riders were stripped of their Tour de France victories for doping, all of them in the 21st century. In this little mini-story, you will learn some of the details of why, how and when Floyd Landis, Alberto Contador and Lance Armstrong lost their victories in Paris. And we will also learn about a case that demonstrates the hypocrisy of the Tour de France organisers. Do you want to hear about them? Well then, without further ado, let the show begin. Floyd Landis This gringo Mennonite cyclist was the first rider to lose a Tour de France for doping after receiving the winner's trophy in Paris. It was a very striking case, since after losing the yellow jersey in a hard mountain stage in the Alps, one that ascended the Col de Galibier and the Col de la Croix de Fer, the Fonac rider lost 10 minutes, and Oscar Pereiro, surprisingly, became the new leader. But the next day, a dubbed up Landis, who tested positive on that same stage for synthetic testosterone, attacked more than 100 kilometers from the finish line, and in a legendary breakaway, managed to win and recover almost all the disadvantage of the previous day, whilst the announcers asked the public to stand up and applaud the dubbed up rider. In the final time trial, Landis regained the yellow jersey and rode to victory in Paris. Three days later, it became known that he had tested positive, and a year after that, he was stripped of the triumph, which went to Oscar Pereiro, the most random tour winner in the entire 21st century. Alberto Contador The man from Madrid was at the top of the cycling world, after winning the Tour de France three times. The first, of course, due to the leader, the Chicken Rasmussen's doping, where he was forced out of the race before finishing. The second was to a Lance Armstrong, who surely was as clean as a whistle. And the third, the 2010 Tour that he was stripped of for doping. Months after winning, we learnt that Contador tested positive for clenbuterol on the second rest day of that competition. Immediately, the Spaniard came out to defend himself, assuring us all that he had eaten contaminated meat, specifically a sirloin steak from a rune in northern Spain that had traces of that damned clenbuterol that sadly appeared in his organism. Months later, we learnt that clenbuterol appeared in numerous anti-doping controls without any evidence that Contador did not act negligently. And so, the Court of Arbitration for Sport imposed a two-year sanction on him in 2012, and correspondingly, he lost the Giro d'Italia and that 2010 Tour de France, which went to the second place, Andy Schleck of Luxembourg. To this day, he still says that it wasn't the doping case. Damn Tour de France vegans. Lance Armstrong but we couldn't leave without talking about the most popular case of all. Lance Armstrong had conquered France seven consecutive times, being the most successful cyclist ever in the French loop. But it was the aforementioned Floyd Landis himself, who after being rejected by Armstrong to join his team when he returned to competition, who denounced the Texan to the US anti-doping agency. He said that both he and Armstrong and his US postal teammates were systematically doping in all the tours won by the American. After a very long process in which Armstrong fought tooth and nail for his claimed innocence, that of course was a lie, it was the rider himself who, as a last resort before falling prey to the federales and going to jail or paying stratospheric fines, confessed his doping in 2013. Two years after retiring and eight years after his last victorious Tour de France, the tour organisation withdrew all his yellow jerseys and decided not to give the victories to the runners-up, assuming that either all of them were also doped and acted outside of the law, or that the blame for Armstrong's triumphs was also theirs for covering up the gringos' doping positives in his seven years of glory. The case of Bjarne Rees The case of the Eagle of Herning is undoubtedly the exception that proves the rule. Bjarne Rees did not test positive in any doping control during his successful 1996 Tour de France, in which he ended the reign of Miguel in the rain. Our bald friend confessed with his telecom colleagues after a long investigation that yes, he had doped, and what's more, he himself detailed how and when, mixing EPO with blood transfusions and dozens of hormones, 
and with which he created a unique cocktail in the history of cycling. However, he was not dispossessed of his Tour Triumph, nor his yellow jerseys, despite the fact that for Rees himself, they were nothing more than souvenirs. And if they wanted him to, he would give the organisers back the leader's jersey. So, speaking as a collector, my friend Bjarne, let me just tell you that if you want, you can give me your yellow jersey. In my position here as analyst at Cycling Stories, I tell you that if you still have it, it's because you saved the Tour de France's ass in 1998 when you sold out your colleagues to defend Jean-Marie Leblanc and continued with that farce of a tour. Favours which always end up being returned. <laughs>